All right, yo, what's up? My name's Petrowski, and it's time for the long-awaited, updated gym rerun guide. For those who don't know, gym reruns are often seen as the best money maker in Pokemon Mo, and that comes at a price because you're only able to do them every 18 hours because that is the cooldown time in which you can rebattle the gym leaders once again. The gym rerun alongside the team and the route that I'll be showing you guys today will end up making you around 300,000 Pokemon every day. Now, gym reruns also only take you one hour every day, so being able to make 300k Pokemon once a day in one hour is quite good. But first things first, let's go ahead and cover all of the preparations and everything you'll need to start gym reruns, including your Pokemon team, your items, and anything you'll need to make in terms of storyline progression to do gym reruns. Now, to follow along this guide in this route, you are going to need all four regions of Pokemon Mo completed. You can do gym reruns with less, and I do encourage it, although you might be able to use the same team for that sort of different route, but you're not going to be able to follow my route exactly, and that's okay, so it's best to just kind of find your own route if that's the case. And you can still use this guide and use my route as an understanding in a way of uh, kind of figuring out how to build your own route, what to avoid, what to look out for. And I've included really nice detailed explanations or detailed descriptions of each gym that I hit up in this route. But without further ado, let's go ahead and cover the first part of the team, the setup portion. So the most important part of this team is what I'm going to go ahead and call the core, which involve these four Pokemon here, the Cottony, the Torkoal, the two Typhlosions. And now the Blastoises, those are what I'll call backup strategy. This is the new part of the run. If you've seen my previous gym rerun guide, you'll know that I did around 18 gyms in that one. And I also didn't have these two Blastoises. Now with these two Blastoises, I'm able to do around two more gyms. So I only do uh, 20 gyms in my run and then I hit up two rich trainers if I have extra time but we'll get into the route in more detail in a sec first let's go ahead and once again cover the strategy the general strategy and the pokemon involved so with cottony cottony is going to be used to set up tailwind let's go ahead and close these cottony is going to be used to set up tailwind with prankster cottony is essentially fixing our speed and torkoal is fixing our damage torkoal is going to be setting up drought and setting up sun and then trying to explode just to sacrifice himself the goal of these two pokemon is to come in do their job and immediately die so that the two Typhlosions can come in and sweep with tons of damage with Eruption, and you'll see that in action in a bit. But to cover what you'll need slash want on these Cottony and Torkoal, you're going to want low IVs and low level. I actually kept this Cottony at level 33 to show you guys kind of an example of this is when I would try to rebreed this Cottony to get it to a lower level. You want these things as low level as possible, but sometimes eventually they might live during your gym run and gain some XP, which is unfortunate. So what I usually recommend doing if that's the case is I usually just recommend grabbing a Ditto or a Pokemon that can breed with them and just rebreeding them uh, and hoping to get that ability and if they don't just rebreed them again uh the, the ivs don't matter all that matters are the moves that they have you need to have a cottony with prankster and tailwind and a torkoal with drought and explosion now explosions are really cheap tm so don't worry about that it's like 500 to maybe 1k pokeon so that should be really easy to get and then cottony getting tailwind is a little more complicated you can either evolve it into a whimsicott and get it upon evolution or tutor it i usually recommend evolving it's usually cheaper and really quick uh, to evolve it into Whimsicott, you only need a Sunstone. So you can literally just go ahead and you might even just have an untradeable Sunstone in your bag. So make sure to check that before buying one. But they're only around 2,600 Pokeons, super cheap. So it's really easy to get Tailwind on it. But for those who don't know, Prankster is going to give st priority status to Tailwind. So essentially, it's going to make it go first and be fast, even though Cottony is level 1 and has no speed investment and is a very slow Pokemon. Comparatively to these level 80s, it's facing down. In terms of items, these are once again very unnecessary items, but if you want to go the extra mile, and if you already have them, it's nice to go ahead and put them on, I guess. Torkoal, Heat Rock helps it, keeps up Sun for 8 turns as opposed to 5, a couple extra turns. If something goes wrong, if you need that extra, those extra turns of damage on your Typhlosions, uh, it can be really helpful. Sometimes this can actually be hurtful, though, if your Typhlosions die too quickly. If something, This is also if something goes wrong. Usually, the gym stat will be very, very clean. It'll be set up, and then 3 turns of Typhlosion, using eruption in the battle over like 99% of the time but some things fake outs or focus ashes or crits or something happens where there's an anomaly or something goes wrong you have to be able to adjust and think on your feet especially after the last couple updates where the devs have been continuously trying to nerf this strategy understandably so since it's so powerful uh rocky helmet is nice if a specific niche situation happens 
Rocky Helmet is nice on Cottony. If a Pokemon were to fake out the Cottony and kill it before it set up Tailwind, and then if you were to bring in your Typhlosions and one of your Typhlosions were, were to happen to get killed because they would get outsped, uh, that would mean that that Pokemon if it also had a focus sash would be able to live the other eruption from your other typhlosion so but if they took damage from the rocky helmet they would actually die so rocky helmet essentially saves you in these like really really niche like 0.001 percent chances where if the pokemon fake outs the cottony that also has focus sash that also is able to outspeed and kill one of your typhlosions etc etc but if you have a rocky helmet go ahead and throw it on your cottony all right, now on to the Typhlosions, which I've answered so many questions about and talked about so many times on stream in the past. So the most important thing with the Typhlosion, you're, you're going to need all these things. You're going to need double choice specs. You can run on a budget and run double charcoal, but I don't. if you're doing that, I don't recommend going to fight Misty in Kanto or Oplucid City in Unova. Those are kind of the two gyms that I would avoid if you don't have access to choice specs yet because they have really high damage checkpoints to be able to take out their Pokemon. Now, let's go ahead and talk about nature. You absolutely need a plus special attack nature that isn't quiet because obviously quiet hurts the speed. The three acceptable and needed natures for Typhlosion are rash, mild, and modest. Now moving on over to EVs, really simple. You just want to do 252 special attack and 252 speed on both of them. Nothing complicated there. Moving on over to IVs. This is where things get a little interesting. So with IVs, the number one stat you want to prioritize is special attack. You really do want to go for that 30 to 31 special attack. You don't need, um, as you can see on this one, I have 26 on this one, which is honestly quite low. I would not recommend this. I would recommend kind of 28 plus, maybe 30 plus. You can do some budget stuff like this, but sometimes issues will arise. Um, and then 25 plus speed. You don't need the 30 speed to 31 that I have on these. Just, I, would rec I usually recommend, high, you know, prioritize that special attack, get that higher special attack, and then speed is the secondary most important. I would not run a Typhlosion that was lower special attack and speed than 25. You definitely want 25 plus on both of these, but I truly recommend 28 plus. Maybe I would go one times 31 and go 31 special attack, 31 special attack on both, and then like 25 plus speed should be perfect. You see a lot of people going those 31, 31, those two times 31 plus nature on Typhlosions. And a lot of the time, it's just not that relevant and not actually going to be helpful. Uh, but people love green number. Now, on to the move set. I actually really like this move set here. Uh, you can change it. It can be different to some extent. But the most important thing is eruption. Eruption, obviously, uh, I actually recommend going ahead and using one PP up on these eruptions because that's like the sweet spot number. Having six PP of eruption is really nice. You can PP max it, but it's not going to be that helpful most of the time. PP up because most I mentioned earlier, most of most battles are going to be three turns. Three turns of your Typhlosions, both using Eruption back to back, so that's obviously three Eruption PP. Now, you might be able to take on another gym without setup and have those three Eruptions left on both the Typhlosion and be able to take out an entirely second gym, so it's nice to have six. That's kind of the sweet spot because it's usually three PP per gym. And the biggest time save within a gym run is not having to heal between the next gym. That's the biggest time save that I recommend to people. That's the, if you can weave out heals here and there, uh, I usually play it pretty safe, but if you want to fit in more gyms, if you want to fit in more pokey in per hour, weaving out heals when possible, it's a little risky, but there's certain cases where you can really uh, consistently weave them out. Um, that's the best way to save time. Even though you're spamming Eruption 99% of the time, having Flamethrower is actually really nice because sometimes you won't either have enough PP or you're, sometimes you'll be at a really low HP in your Typhlosion. Sometimes there's a, there's a rare case where your Typhlosion will lose too much HP and having access to Flamethrower will often do more damage than Eruption, which is super relevant. Now, sometimes you'll still want to spam the Eruption even if you're at 1 HP simply because to break through those Focus Ashes or to hit them an extra time to be able to KO them through Sturdies and stuff like that is super relevant. Um, and then also Cut. Cut is super nice because I think there's at least there's at least one gym that you need to cut through a tree to be able to get to, which is the one in Vermilion and Kanto. And then having Swift. Having Swift is a nice backup strategy. It's a special attack and normal type move. It's a nice backup strategy to take care of flash fire Pokemons if you're able to lock it in. But usually you'll have your Blast Wizards in the back to be able to take care of that. But it's a nice backup strat to be able to have access to. All right, now on over to the Blastoises, which are the essentially the new part of the run. These kind of changed the run and added two more gyms to it. Uh, so if you have, if you've seen my previous gym rerun guide, but not this one or haven't seen this team, this will be the new sort of information that is super important for you to, to take in and uh, just watch out for. 
These blast voices operate very similarly to the Typhlosions. They both want a plus special attack nature. Once again, anything but quiet works, so modest, mild, or rash. Now let's go ahead and cover the stats page because this will actually explain some of my EV mishaps and I'll explain what I did wrong and how you guys can avoid making this mistake. So you can actually see that I have two different types of Blastoises to some extent. I have one Blastoise with a Mystic Water and one Blastoise with a Choice Bex. And the reason being is that this Mystic Water Blastoise is meant to set up Rain Dance and then Water Spout on the second turn. You don't want to be Water Spouting on the first turn with this Blastoise if possible. You want to set up Rain Dance and then go for Water Spouts on the next turn. So there's two things, obviously. Mystic Water, you need to be able to switch up moves. And then secondly, you really need the Rain Dance Blastoise to be faster than the, the Specs Water Spout Blastoise because you want to be able to get off that turn one Rain Dance before using your Water Spout because that'll increase your damage, you know, by 1.5 times. It's a huge damage increase, especially with a high base power like this. So now we look at the EVs and you guys see my mistake. So essentially what I did wrong was I, I leveled this Blastoise or I turned this Blastoise into my Choice Specs non Rain Dance setting one, but this one had the higher speed IV and that was my mistake. So if you have one Blastoise with the higher speed IV, make sure to make that your Rain Dance setter. So I ended up making this mistake and now I had to essentially delete some of the speed EVs from this Blastoise and kind of fuck it up in a weird way, uh, but I was able to make it slower than this Blastoise. And that's the most important thing. Make sure your Choice Specs Blastoise is slower than your Rain Dance Setting Blastoise. And these are very budget Blastoise. I would definitely like to make these better at some point. Honestly, having 2x31 on the Blastoises is probably more important than having the 2x31 on the Typhlosions as well, since you're not often using Tailwind to make up for your speed. So having that 31 speed IV is actually super relevant. So the blast choices are a case where once again i kind of recommend going 25 plus special attack and speed but at the same time th going two times 31 is definitely worth it on something like this especially when you're gonna have to invest so much time in getting the water spout egg move on these guys and this can be a little annoying now i don't want to sit here and talk about it too much but water spout is essentially a chain egg move which means you have to breed one species with another species and then finally be able to breed that species with your squirtle now i do have a full guide covering that and covering how to get water spout onto blastoises that's why buying these on the gtl is usually really expensive especially compared to typhlosions usually these will cost like maybe 1.5 to 2 times the price of a Typhlosion because getting that egg move is super annoying i will be making sure to link that egg move guide in the description below but I think that pretty much covers everything for Blastoise and covers everything for the Pokemon team. Make sure you have a Mystic Water Blastoise and a Choice Bex Blastoise and you should be ready to go. Alright, we've covered what Pokemon you need, we've covered what storyline progression you need. Third thing and most importantly, or one of the most important after, you know, your Pokemon, you're gonna need a Riches Charms, an Amulet Coin, or something that can boost your Poke Yen per hour. These are so unbelievably powerful when, when used alongside gym runs. They are needed. I do not recommend doing gym runs without these. And there's no it's like they're not that expensive i really recommend stocking up on these when they're cheap or trying to buy at least one of these before you do your gym run all right now i almost forgot to mention this but you guys definitely need these two items for this run to work because this is a full stock team of pokemon you're not you don't have any room for any hm friends or anything like that so you absolutely need the fly ocarina and the teleport ocarina for this run the teleport ocarina is less necessary but it does save you a little bit of time in these situations the fly ocarina is mandatory you need the fly ocarina for this run because obviously you don't have room for a fly pokemon and you're gonna have to be flying around very very quickly to maneuver to different gym runs all right now is a perfect time that we're talking about the item the riches charm the amulet coin to go ahead and bring up the windows calculator the absolute goat of the channel the carry of the youtube channel and go ahead and run some numbers and figure out whether amulet coin or riches charm is going to be best for you and how much money i make personally on this run and on this route all right, so the things to understand and factor in are understanding how many gyms you do per hour and obviously the price of the richest charms or the amulet coin. So, and also how much poking you're getting. So I know that I do 20 gyms within my one hour of a gym rerun. And I also know that when popping the richest charms plus 75%, you get 1,500 and Five, it's 15,500 Poke in per gym leader. That's going to come out to 310k plus the two richest trainers at the very end, which will give you around 10k, 9k a piece. So I'm going to add 20k to the price check for that. So now we're at a total of 330k Poke in made from the gym run, but we do have to subtract the value of the richest charm or the amulet coin, whichever you're using. Obviously, amulet coin is not a 75%, so make sure to check. Uh, 
the correct increase of price. I think you make around 12 to 13K per gym leader on an amulet coin. So right now, Rich's Charms 75% are at around 40K a piece. Now, I bought all of mine at around 27K a piece because I picked up all of mine during the 10 year anniversary event. And this comes the importance of picking up Rich's Charms and stocking up on stuff like this during the events when they're super cheap. Uh, usually, Rich's Charms only come into the game through the Lunar New Year event, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the same as Shiny Charms. They might come in through other holiday events, but I kind of forget off the top of my head, but I really recommend trying to pick these up when they're cheap. Stocking up on Rich's Charms during events is a great way to sustain long-term wealth and have those nice gym runs as the year goes on. So if I were to subtract 27k, which is the price that I paid for the richest charms, I'd obviously be left at around 303k. But you kind of have to you have to kind of factor in, right? Like if I were to sell my richest charms, you have to factor in that expected you know value. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the minus 40k. It's gonna put me at around 290k. You can really make 300k pretty easily from this, but you might need to weave in another trainer or another leader. Now, let's go ahead and calc the amulet coin price. I actually haven't calc the amulet coin price in quite a while, so I'm kind of interested to see how this turns out. So amulet coins are at around 14k a piece right now, but with them you make around 13k per gym leader. So let's go ahead and do 20 times 13k, and then we're going to subtract the cost. Ooh, a lot more as you can see, or I guess a lot less, plus 20k. Or actually, we don't get, uh, how do you, so I would add a uh, plus 16k, I guess, for the richest trainers really quick. Or right, the 260k from the gyms and then the 16k from the richer trainers is going to put us at 276k minus the 14k price of the amulet coin, leaving us at around 262k profit. So as you can see, Rich's charms are definitely way more worth it right now, uh, especially if you're doing more than 20 gyms. But even at 20 gyms, even at probably like 18, 17, maybe 16, I'm not sure, you have to kind of run your own numbers based on how many gyms you have access to. But now you guys know sort of the formula to follow. All right, now that we're done all of that math, let's go ahead and jump into a light overview of the route. And then I'll go ahead and start my gym run and give you guys a physical and visual representation of what it should look like. But quickly, I do want to say I've clearly spent a lot of time and effort on this guide. So if you guys find it helpful, I would really appreciate if you could like the video and maybe subscribe to the channel for future Pokemon uploads and daily Pokemon content. Thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'm super honored to be able to do this. I really do just hope you guys find this super helpful, and I truly do think that everyone should be able to make a ton of Poke in and Pokemon because the opportunity is there and you guys deserve the information, but let's go ahead and cover the gym route. Alright, as you guys can see on the left hand side of the screen, it's written out, but it's not the prettiest and it has some sort of descriptions, it's a little confusing, so I'm just going to take it down step by step and show you guys what I mean by everything. So. First things first, this is actually some of the most important things. I always start my run in Unova. I start my gym run in Unova, and the first thing I do is set my teleport location at Striation City. So it's a little bit of preparation and setup you do before just going to a gym and starting your run, and I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So setting your teleport location is essentially flying to a town, going inside the PC, leaving it, and then going to the gym you wanna start at. So what this is gonna do, uh, I use this because what I do is I, I set my teleport there, I fly over to Nacreen City. I don't go in the PC. Do not go in the PC in Nacreen City because that will change your teleport location there. Make sure you have a teleport ocarina or a teleport Pokemon on you. It's also super important. Excuse me. I definitely should have mentioned that for this run. Wow, it's a huge mistake. Maybe I'll add that in post. I'm not sure. Making sure you have a fly ocarina and a teleport ocarina is super important for this run when you have an entire team stocked full of Pokemon. All right, but back on track, you would set your teleport at Striation City, run all the way back here in the Nutrine City Museum to get to the gym. And this is part of why we start our gym run in this gym, because it's such a far run to get all the way to this gym. Being able to only have to do half of the run to get out saves a lot of time. So you would go ahead, battle this gym leader, and then run all the way out. Don't forget to pop your Riches Charms or Amulet Coin before you battle that first trainer. Run all the way out and then you would go ahead and click Teleport and this is the quick time save. So instead of flying over to Striation City, you can go ahead and teleport directly to the PC. You would go ahead and heal up. It only saves a little bit of time, but it's really nice and it's really relevant and I do it at the start of all my German. So you would heal up and then you would run immediately over to Striation City. 
You then run all the way inside to the Stration City Gym, and there are three gym leaders waiting for you in Stration City Gym, and this is super important, and doing this in the correct route is super, super important. So you're going to start by battling the Water Gym Leader and using your two setup Pokemon. Once you use your setup Pokemon, they faint, so having to go heal them and get them back up again takes a lot of time, so you don't want to have to do that. The route, and like I mentioned over here in the Notepad document, is Water Gym Leader, Grass Gym Leader, and then Fire with the Blastoise Strat. So what you would do is you would defeat the Water Gym Leader, use your two setup Pokemon, they would be defeated and they would go down. Then you would just use your Typhlosion against the Grass Gym Leader and that should be enough to take care of him. And then you'll drag your Blastoises up like this in your party, situate them like that. These will be dead at that time so they will skip to be skipped through. You'll battle him, you'll set up Rain Dance, and then you'll Water Spout through them. I might go ahead and just go ahead and start my Gym Run just so I can go through everything with you guys and physically show you what it looks like. I wanted to go ahead and spend a little bit of extra time explaining the actual start of the run since it takes a little more than the actual real time process. So hopefully you guys understand about setting your teleport location, then teleporting back to striation and then going through the gym in that order. Let's go ahead now and do it in real time. So um, I set my teleport location. I'm going to go ahead and head over to Nacreen. We're going to go pop a riches charms and we're going to physically do a gym run. All right, here we are, like so. We're going to go ahead and click Use on our coin, our Grinch's Charm, and then go ahead and start the battle. I'm going to make sure to drag the screen over as well so you guys can see everything and see the timer. The, seeing the timer on the charm is super important. Understanding what times you should be at what gym and sort of what to look for in that area is super important. So let's give you guys a physical example of what the first battle or what the average battle should look like. So you're going to want to come in. Drought is going to get set up. You're going to go ahead and proc your Tailwind. Go ahead and try to explode on your Torkoal. doesn't matter what. Usually you just want to spam through these moves as quickly as possible. Make sure to have your Typhlosions here. Once again, I have my Bless was here. A little bit of a mistake, but shouldn't matter too much. Go ahead and go ahead and set up your Tailwind. Set up your Sun. Fix your Speed. Fix your Damage. Both of these Pokemon will usually go down from any type of move. And you'll be able to bring in your Typhlosions safely like so. Uh, and spam Eruption to Victory. So your Typhlosions come in, you want to spam through as quickly as possible, and this should be enough to one-shot pretty much any Pokemon. It's just so much absurd damage, and you guys will really be able to physically see here. Dragonite is a Pokemon that is really tanky and can really resist this stuff, and I believe it has multi-scale, which is what makes this one so specifically tanky, so it only did a little bit of damage at first, but now this eruption should do plenty of damage to take it out. 9.9, there we go. Beautiful, defeated. Now, Sun is still up, obviously. Two more Pokemon come in. We just keep spamming the Eruption, uh, and then two more Pokemon go down. It's really that simple. It's just a ton of damage. Even four times resist Pokemon like Kindra will usually fold to this strategy. It's just too much damage incoming to be able to handle. All right, looks like I'm finishing that gym at around 57 minutes and 45 seconds, which means it took me a little over two minutes to do the first gym. You want to go ahead and path and, sp and sprint, you know, as fast as possible, usually defeating each gym within around three to four minutes alongside movement and pathing is your goal. Uh, you can be really quick. Um, but that's that's kind of the goal to aim for. We go ahead and immediately teleport. Don't waste your time going to your fly. If you set your teleport location, make sure to abuse that. Don't don't fly. Don't waste that time. Abuse the you know the setup you've you've taken care of. You've done. I'm gonna move my Typhlosions back. I'm gonna come up here. I forgot to bite on the outside. Make sure you bite whenever you possibly can. Make sure you're always sprinting. Sometimes you'll make a mistake and turn it off. And now I'm gonna show you guys once again that order that I talked about earlier. Water gym leader first using your setup Pokemon. And from here on out, I'm not going to show you guys each and every battle because it's pretty much the same thing. Unless something changes, I'll let you guys know. Alright, but there's the Water Gym defeated at around 55 minutes exactly. We want to immediately move on over to the Grass type Gym Leader. And here you see that I've actually made a mistake, unfortunately. Sometimes you'll see a lot of lag on switching these Pokemon around and you have to watch out for that. It's really easy to make a mistake. Thankfully, I should still be able to Water Spout through these guys and it should be fine but i'll let you guys know if something goes wrong and you have to really think on your feet in gym runs and really adjust to stuff so i'm just going to water spout through and this should be enough damage but you do want to be aware of that especially the lag on these drag arounds could really be bad i think the devs know it's actually been bugged for a while now so hopefully they get a fix on that soon Aquaberry weakens the damage but it's still just too much damage we don't even need the water spout on those first two pokemon all right, now thankfully that small mistake literally didn't cost me any time. Just the one Typhlosion's eruption was more than enough damage to 100% OKO everything. So we're finishing the Grass Gym Leader at around 53 minutes, 30 seconds or so. So a lot of honestly really good time here. These are going to be the fastest Gym Leaders that you do. Now you want to as quickly as possible move your Blastoise up to make sure he's they're both in the lead of your party. 
come into the fire type gym leader and you need to have these blast voices to be able to take on this gym this is one of the leaders that i would skip before i had my blast voices and if you don't have the blast voices i recommend checking out my previous uh, gym rerun guide and that should be able to help you out a ton now here i'm going to be showing you guys the first the first blastoise the first blastoise battle of the video we go ahead and set up rain dance it goes off before our water spout so our water spout gets increased damage allowing us to one shot both of the pokemon super easy stuff and now from here on out we can both just spam water spout and it becomes even easier and there we go that's the fire type gym leader defeated at around 52 minutes let's go ahead and sprint out of this gym as quickly as possible and fly over to castelia city as quickly as possible go ahead and make our fly like this you want to click honestly like using your wasd or or your movement keys to be able to fly around to towns is going to end up costing you a lot of time at times so making sure you use your actual mouse to click and like kind of predict or understand where the teleport or where the flies are going to be can save you a little bit of time any small time saves can really add up and really matter within the gym rerun and then we bike all the way over to the very, very west of Castelia City, and you'll find the gym right here. Make sure to switch your type Flosions back up. I, I often will make this mistake a lot. It doesn't really matter as long as you're aware of it, and make sure to click the right slots within battle to choose your type Flosions. But there's definitely been times where I've been on autopilot mode and just accidentally brought my, after using my setup, just accidentally bringing my Blast Voices in. Once you do hundreds and hundreds of gym reruns, you really start to develop that muscle memory and autopilot mode. And sometimes you'll make mistakes because of that. So you always gotta kind of stand your toes and be willing to adjust to things another quick little tip is making sure to move all of your moves to that first slot as you can see my cottony has tailwind in that slot my torkoal has explosion in that slot and my typhlosions both have eruption in the first slot if you do that you can usually for me i spam z z is my a button you can spam your a button key in the battles and it ends up being a little bit faster than clicking usually but Castelia City is a pretty easy gym, defeating him at around 49 minutes left. We sprint out of here, and then we want to fly over to Nimbasa City really quick, and that city will have an interesting thing for us to think about slash worry about. So we fly over to Nimbasa as quickly as possible. We want to heal up again, of course, and this gym is going to have a Flash Fire Mon to look out for, or a chance of having a Flash Fire Mon. There's two Flash Fire Pokemon we need to watch out for in our run, and as long as we have our Blast Voices alive and healthy, you should be able to deal with them 100%, and I'll show you guys how to safely deal with Flash Fire Mons. I hear this question a lot about people encountering Flash Fire Mons in their gym runs and being like, oh, I, I keep dying to them. What do I do? Like, it's it must be impossible, right? And it's, it's really, really easy as long as you have a level 100 either blastoise in the back or i used to use a crocodile just having a crocodile in the back level 100 with uh earthquake was 100 percent safe you'd always be able to deal with the flash fire mons and the way you do it is by not switching out and i'll show you guys if that happens uh hopefully we see one flash fire mon within this route just to show you guys um but I think the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is they instantly switch out when they see a flash fire mon to be able to um, try to deal with it. But you shouldn't do that because all that does is risk your answer to the flash fire mon getting killed. What you should do is slowly let your Typhlosion be whittled down. And once they get whittled down, they'll be able to, you'll be able to safely bring in either your Blastoise or your Krukal at 100% HP and be able to get off that attack to be able to kill the flash fire Pokemon. All right, so there we go. We actually did run into the Flash Fire Mon. So this Nine Tails, this is a good thing. It's honestly good to show off in the guide. This Nine Tails is the Flash Fire Mon. So usually this does cost you a little bit of time, unfortunately, but you should safely be able to deal with it. And once again, this is the way to deal with it. Just eruption in the face of it over and over and over again. It's totally okay. You'll end up taking out these Pokemon, other Pokemon slowly, and then safely be able to deal with it after. This is truly the best method that I've found. I don't recommend just instantly switching out or trying to deal with it in you know a fast direct way just go ahead eruption into the face of it event you'll take out all of these pokemon eventually you'll have two low hp typhlosions versus the flash fire nine tails and you'll be one of them will die you'll bring in your blastoise everything should be fine all right here we can actually see so one of my typhlosions got focused and went down before uh, my other one so I can go ahead and bring it in before even we usually you'll actually even see all of the Pokemon going down but now I can go ahead and safely bring in this Blastoise and I should be able to water spout and the nine tails will probably go down here I think Sun is still up so honestly there's a decent there's a chance it lives through the water spout um, since Sun is up and water spouts gonna have reduced damage here but I don't know choice specs stab water spout Blastoise there's a good chance this one shots and it looks like it does yep 
nice so it's really safe you can usually deal with flash fire mons 100 percent of the time as long as you have a single pokemon in the back to deal with them um just do that it's crazy how often i see people being like you know my entire gym run got stopped by a flash fire mon. like what do i do i just can't figure out a way to get past it and that's that's how you do it just let your stuff die uh, let it go down slowly play smart and now we want to go ahead and fly over to drift veil city now there's actually a really cool strat you can do here to save a little bit of time this is very min max and i'll talk about it in a quick sec someone showed me or talked about this before and i thought this was pretty hilarious and i would love to try it sometime but we're not going to be doing it this video all right, so the time save would be once you make it over here to Driftvale City, if you are to, especially that one's pretty quick, but this one, if you click down here and then log out, you'll actually be able to log back in and you'll be at the bottom. And this is a pretty long like teleportation sequence. And during this whole teleportation sequence, your richest charm or amulet coin is ticking down. So you can actually save like 10, 15 seconds, I want to say, I would guess there. It's a probably a decent amount of time by logging out and logging back in. Also, when you log out while a richest charms or amulet coin is ticking it will not keep ticking while you're logged out they only tick down while you're logged in so if you're someone who has a very very busy life and you have you know a full-time job you have kids you have family whatever it may be if you're having trouble sitting down it like you know it's 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 really hard for a lot of people to be able to sit down for a full hour and just do a gym run and i totally understand that so what you can do is you can you know maybe wake up before work uh go ahead and do you know 30 minutes of your gym run maybe 15 minutes of your gym run before you go to work and then come home and finish the rest now that is going to make your timers a little weird obviously because they'll kind of be off sync you know what you know what i mean by that because then certain trainers but if, but if you do that schedule every day uh then it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter it's it's perfectly in sync if you do that schedule every day now if you want to wake up at on the weekends and and do a full hour you know at 10 a.m you're going to encounter a problem because at that point you'll have this issue where you know the first half of your gym run is able to be rebattled but the second half is still on that 18 hour cooldown so each 18 hour cooldown works separately if that makes sense it's not like an entire cooldown it's like a each gym leader has that 18 hour cooldown attached to them but usually that's why it's so important to have the consistency and the route of a gym run so you can keep that 18 hour cooldown in mind uh, and get around that but yeah there are certain ways around it if you have a full-time job if you have if you have kids if, you, if you're very very busy uh, you can break it up and do it in portions there we go drift fail defeated that's a super easy one leaving us with around 41 minutes and 30 seconds left i believe we head right on over to oplucid city and oplucid city is one of the more dangerous gyms in the route because uh, i think iris is her name iris has access to a um a multi-scale dragonite which can be really difficult in tanking some of your attacks and i'll kind of show you guys what that looks like so there is a small chance uh, especially, like I mentioned, if you don't have choice bets on your Typhlosions, if you're rocking the charcoal, the budget Typhlosions, or if you're rocking some budget Typhlosions, you might not be able to kill her Pokemon. So this is a gym that sometimes if damage rolls happen or if something goes wrong, you might fail it. I've failed this gym a couple of times, um, as well as uh, this might just be a gym you want to skip entirely if you're rocking on a budget. But let's go ahead and go up to it. A lot of people also don't know this teleporter is right here. I didn't know that was right there for a long time. So make sure you don't go through this whole gym puzzle. That gym puzzle is a huge pain. You just skip through, go to the teleporter. And this is once again, another gym. We just go ahead and use our Cottony and Torkoal to set up with. And we should be able to Typhlosion blast through it like any other gym. But the tankiness, the damage, we'll kind of, we'll, sh we'll see if there's an issue here. Um, sometimes it does happen. Sometimes it doesn't. All right, looks like we got lucky and we didn't even see the Dragonite today. So looking like a pretty clean run. We're able to take out these last couple Pokemon. Finishing Iris at around 38 minutes is usually what you're aiming for. You want to start, it's kind of like, I usually sort of like time checkpoints to understand how fast or how slow my current run is going. Heading over to Kanto at around 38 minutes is pretty good time. That's what you want to aim for. But like I just mentioned, after you defeat Iris, we go ahead and head back down. And now we're going to be making our way over to Kanto. So we want to fly to Castelia City as quickly as possible. Go ahead and don't waste your time healing in Unova. You actually heal a little bit slower in Unova. So you want to immediately head over to Kanto. And we're going to go ahead and prep our Blast Voices. Because first things first, we're going to head to Kanto. We're immediately going to fly over to Blaine's gym. And we're going to do his gym without healing because you're able to use blast voices to take care of your gym and once again doing as many gyms in but like you know without with the least amount of heals that's what's going to save you the most amount of time on your gym runs and sometimes the blaine gym can have some issues and can go wrong so hopefully we don't run into those today but i'll kind of explain what can happen and setting up rain against blaine is super super important because sometimes you'll see him with a charizard lead with solar beam 
and that can be really really scary now thankfully we actually don't see that here today which is super nice so we should be good i know that this flareon does outspeed us i believe and goes for like a superpower or something like that but it's usually not too bad i should be able to water spout on him rain dance on him you will take some damage here you will get super powered and that's okay if you do get crit that's when things can be really scary but as long as you don't get crit as long as you live you'll be able to set up rain and one shot both of those flareon and nine tails in response and the run should be super safe from there now here we encountered another issue so this tauros outsped us and got a wild charge off it is going to be able to kill our blastoise we're still we still should be totally fine and the Dodrio. So this happens sometimes. The the Blaine Gym can have some weird issues where Pokemon will outspeed you. So and I'm really encountering that now. So thankfully, uh, this Blastoise does live. It takes out both of those Pokemon still. But we're gonna have to bring in a Typhlosion here as sort of a backup strategy to be able to help aid in this gym. And this happens. This is super normal. This is just the definition of trying to think on your feet. So this is where we want to see we want to see if arcanine has intimidate here or flash fire so we do see the intimidate that's something you want to watch out for there because if the arcanine has flash fire you obviously don't want to click eruption on the typhlosion but since we saw the flash with the intimidate excuse me we're able to go ahead and just click eruption that is actually super relevant checking out for those arcanine is a huge one that can either be flash fire or intimidate on these gym runs but there we go pretty clean KOs here taking down Blaine Blaine can cost you a little bit of time like that but that's honestly that was not too bad uh we'll definitely go ahead and take that crits are what really hurt you at Blaine if the Flareon crits you or the or the Tauros or the Dodrio sky attack that will end up usually costing you the entire battle and you might need to go ahead and reset on that unfortunately but um and I'll, I'll kind of cover if something happens in a gym if something goes horribly wrong in the gym battle is no longer winnable do not waste time by sticking around and playing through the entire battle just go ahead and log out logging out will allow you to tell me teleported back to the previous pc that you were last at and then you'll be able to go ahead and run back to the gym and just retry it or go on to the next gym if you're having too many issues with it but yeah making sure to use the logout button or the logout trick to essentially save some time is super important we're gonna go ahead and heal up we go, to, go to pewter city set up our typhlosion strat back up and make sure we take on brock with the typhlosion strat i've really tried taking on brock with the with the water spout strat because it makes sense you know brock's a water type gym leader but he ends up having like slow bro he ends up having dry skin uh toxic croak which is impossible to break through with it so you really need to usually just the, i recommend doing the uh, typhlosion eruption strat against him for sure now here we go brock is actually another pokemon that can have a flash fire pokemon we actually encountered two flash fire pokemon we had a really unlucky honestly the rng from this run specifically has been really bad we encountered the tauros and dodrio that outsped us we encountered both flash fire bonds but still we're making pretty decent time and we're still able to battle through it as long as you play correctly and as long as you think on your feet so now we're gonna do the same exact thing we did at the previous nine tails where we just wait until one of our typhlosions go down safely bring in a blastoise and take care of it all right, now we end up in this situation where my Typhlosions are slowly getting whittled down. The Ninetales are just spamming Heat Wave. In this position, you might be able to double switch. I'm actually going to go ahead and test it, honestly. I wouldn't recommend doing this. This is kind of risky, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. If you're in this position where, you know, both of your Typhlosions are still alive and you kind of have to, that would take two more turns of Heat Waves for that one to go down. So it could save me a little time to be able to bring in both my Blast Voices here. And if I outspeed, I should be able to go ahead and get off a Water Spout and take care of this thing. That one gets burned, but it shouldn't matter this should be pretty safe if you're in this position but i'm gonna go ahead and water spout on this one and rain dance on this one rain dance goes up we are faster water spout goes out and it's focus sashed which is really annoying so once again take another turn to take care of it so we didn't really save that much time honestly but yeah that's that's really the best way you can handle these things the flash fire mons aren't necessarily difficult but they do cost you time and that's the most important thing within a gym run so this was a pretty unlucky gym run unfortunately but still we're making decent time this is a really good of, example of a gym run where we might not be able to battle the two richest trainers at the end and i'll show you guys where those are located they're on route 13 right above undela city or undela bay in uh, unova now we're going to go ahead and fly on over to misty you can see the highlighted blue on the left side that's where we're at currently in the run misty is another huge stop gap misty and oplusa gym are the two huge what i call stop gaps in the gym run where they have extremely tanky pokemon that actually have a chance of living through the strategy because misty has this kingdra which four times resists the eruption which can be really difficult to break through usually you do but there is a chance i, have to, I haven't calced it but there is a chance there's a damage roll where uh, you don't kill, which is super unfortunate when it happens. 
Now, Misty did something really annoying that you're going to want to watch out for. It for On turn one, she U-turned her Pelipper out of the battle and then brought it back in. So now she's able to set up Rain again, which is super annoying. And sometimes, it might happen here, I'm actually not able to kill through the Rain. But thankfully, you do have your Water, you do have your water Spout Blastoises, so I should be able to bring them in after and Water Spout and kill these guys. But it sucks how this is like one of the, this might be a really good example of like the worst RNG you could possibly get in. Jimmy run we do thankfully take out the Pelipper but the Gyarados goes ahead and lives um, but that's okay he's gonna go ahead and take out one of my Typhlosions it shouldn't matter too much I just go ahead and bring in a backup backup Blastoise in the back and then the eruption from my Typhlosion plus the water spout from my Blastoise uh, should be able to take him out it's just unlucky that it happened like this all it does once again all it really does is cost you time it's not really gonna like hurt you but uh, time is money and t you know losing enough time over a jimmy run will sometimes knock you know less gyms out of your run or knock those rich trainers off at the very end which costs you around you know 20k maybe 10k with the richest charm there we go misty defeated thankfully now we can go ahead and move on over to celadon and if my typhlosion didn't die i would have actually been able to save time and not heal and just head straight down to celadon without uh, healing because sometimes you're able to take on Celadon without setup. The reason being because often she will lead with a drought nine tails of her own, and she's also a grass type gym leader. So, obviously, the drought the main thing you have to worry about then is speed. If she outspeeds you, she can sometimes hit you with some sort of attack, but usually the attack doesn't do enough damage to actually interrupt your eruption chain. But here, we're going to go ahead and play it safe and heal up and use the, the setup strat against her, and it should be a pretty free gym. All right, there we go. There's the Celadon Gym Leader taken care of. Now, unfortunately, we're making really poor time. 25 minutes left. Usually, I like to aim to head over to Hoenn at around 20 minutes to give you sort of a reference. So now, we're actually going to skip a gym. We're skipping Vermilion to head down to Fuchsia. I'm going to heal up and go ahead and do this Fuchsia gym. I'll show you guys the route that I take uh, in the invisible sort of uh, location. I think there's actually a better route, but honestly, this is just the one that I know and the muscle memory one that I do. So here, follow this path if you want. I think there's actually a faster one, but this is the one that I do. Just once again, I'm just used to it. Muscle memory and everything. I come over here. Go to Koga, and there we go. Right there. Uh, pretty easy. I think there's a faster one that it just involves over here, but I don't I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, and then after this, we're going to head over to Vermilion after, because after you defeat Vermilion, you're actually able to surf across the water and be able to head over to the dock a little bit faster and save a little bit of time in that transition. Now, unfortunately... You know, like I said earlier, it usually takes around three to four minutes per gym, and we're at 24 minutes. I'm not going to be able to make that 20-minute checkpoint or that 20-minute goal of getting to Hoenn before, uh, which is, it just happens. Like, this is the worst RNG possible, honestly, that could happen in a gym run, so it's a good example. I think it works well for the guide, and honestly, uh, I'm happy I got it on video at least. Koga can also be a bit complicated at times as his Pokemon can have red cards, which will sort of switch out your Pokemon or it, it, you can, kind of things can get jumbled around. It should be pretty easy. It should be pretty safe, but sometimes it can get annoying and confusing due to those items. All right, there's T Koga taken care of at around the 22 minute and 30 second mark. Let's try to get out of his gym as quickly as possible. And then once again, try to make our way over to Vermilion. And hopefully, maybe we'll be able to save enough time where we actually will make decent time heading into Hoenn. If I can make it there with around 19 minutes left, honestly, I'd be pretty happy with that. We're going to fly to Vermilion as soon as possible, heal up really quick. And this is the gym where you're going to have act you have to have access to cut either on your Typhlosions or with an Ocarina to be able to get to the gym. Uh, having a Surf Ocarina is also super nice here if you want to do this surf strat this surf strat is not needed it's not super important but it can save you a little bit of time so it is nice but if you don't already have a surf ocarina getting a surf ocarina just to save a little bit of time on the strat probably isn't worth it although you could go ahead and go ahead and put surf on your blastoise these other moves aren't nearly that important so yeah go ahead honestly put surf on that blastoise this gym should once again be a really simple typhlosion strat gym we just set up with the cotton and the torkoal and eruption them down should be super easy all right, there we go. Lieutenant Surge defeated with around 19 minutes and 30 seconds left. So honestly, making definitely better time than it could have been. And now I'm going to head over here and go ahead and use my surf to surf over here to the dock. And now we can quickly head over to Hoenn. You want to go to Hoenn, immediately fly down over to Duford Town, I believe is what this one is called. Hoenn's probably the most simple region in terms of gym runs. Pretty much nothing can go wrong in any of the four gyms that I do here. I pretty much just heal up 
head over to the gym, take it out, and that's it. It's just it's all Typhlosion strat. It's all really simple. Hoenn's a pretty brain dead region here, so that's a pretty nice relief, honestly. Head up to this gym, take it out with Typhlosion strat, and move on to the next. All right, there we go. There's that gym defeated with around 16, honestly 16:45, making pretty good time. Want to head out of this gym as soon as possible. Then go ahead and fly over to the next gym, which I believe is Petalbird. Now, Petalbird is a little annoying because it has a pretty long, like, entry, like, run in and run out time, essentially. Very similar to Necreen City, where you kind of have to go through a bunch of doors. And you want to be, want to make sure you're as fast as possible in this gym. So head to either side of the doors and just spam your A key as fast as possible and get through all of them. It's really annoying, unfortunately. Uh, it does cost you a little bit of time, but it's not too bad and it's worth it. Go ahead and make it to this gym leader uh, and just battle through him once again as quickly as possible. Now, here's an interesting thing to note in this gym. This can sometimes happen. So sometimes he'll, he'll use slacking pretty much every time. And if this happens and one of your Pokemon lives, this is actually a very, very niche scenario where you actually do want to switch out because what's going to happen is your Typhlosion is going to most likely be able to kill both Pokemon. The Kecleon actually lived hilariously. So the Kecleon lives, but your Typhlosion will usually kill both of them or kill most of them. And I can, you can save. Oh, no, it did. Okay, perfect. Okay, it killed. So the one Typhlosion will kill both of them. You're able to safely switch from your Cottony if it lived over to the other Typhlosion. And this is a huge reason why you want to make sure you uh, breed down your Cottony. I've, I, I've been way too lazy on this thing. Breeding down this Cottony back to level 1 is going to be... Like, I have to do that right after this gym run. Like, it's super important. I've been putting it off for too long. You really, really want to make sure your Cottony and Torkoal have the, the best chance at dying on that turn 1 play. All right, there we go. The Petalburg Gym defeated at 13 minutes and 45 seconds. Once again, run out of the gym as quickly as possible and head on to the next. Now, the next gym on the list is going to be Rustboro City. Make sure to highlight that. Head on over to it. Once again, just heal up really quick and head to the northeast. Quickly run up here. Make your way to the gym. Go inside. The gym, quote unquote, puzzles, just maneuvering around these guys, obviously. Head up to the gym leader. Don't bonk like I do and battle it as quickly as possible once again. Looking at 13 minute time check at the moment. All right, there's Rustboro City defeated at 10 minutes and 45 seconds. Now it's time to head on over to Fortree City. And I think we only have three gyms left, including Fortree City, which is super nice. We want to try now. This is like crunch time. We want to be as fast as possible because making sure we can try to weave in those two rich trainers at the very end would be super nice. It's looking really tough, but we'll see the best time we can make. I'm definitely going to try to do the non setup strat on the Eterna City gym, which will save a little bit of time uh, and not have to make us heal. So let's go ahead and head into this gym really quick or tree you just head around you just walk around the hoenn gym quote-unquote puzzles or the hoenn gym leaders are really really easy to rebattle head over here start this gym once again very same thing very easy brain dead strategies just the setup and the typhlosion strat all right, there we go. Fortree City defeated with eight minutes left, which is okay time. It gives us plenty of time to take on those last two gyms, but honestly, it's really pushing it slash really not giving us much time, any extra time to deal with those two rich trainers, unfortunately. I still usually recommend battling the two rich trainers, um, even if you don't have any time left, because they're really, really quick and easy, and it's just a great way to get five. I think you get 5k each from them. Now we head over to Sinnoh. Go immediately to Eterna City, and this is the one you can possibly do without any sort of setup. The main thing here is going to be the speed. Uh, if you get outsped by stuff and take too much damage, it can be an issue, but being able to eruption through uh, this gym can be a really safe strat most of the time. Uh, it's a grass type gym leader, pretty simple stuff. I think Lee Vanny is actually one of the Pokemon that does outspeed us. We'll go ahead and see. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, perfect. Nice. We should be able to break through this gym then. All right, there we go. Eterna City defeated. Okay, let's all tab there for a sec. Six minutes left, so we defeated that gym in around two minutes or even less. Saved a lot of time there, which is super nice. Now, we do need the setup for this gym, unfortunately, because uh, I believe this gym will often lead with Tyranitar. So you have to have the setup because you have to be able to reset the weather. If that Tyranitar gets that Sandstorm off, you're just never going to be able to do enough damage to push through him, unfortunately. So have, making sure you heal uh, and having the setup for this gym is super important. And this is the last gym I do in my run, the Orberg City Gym. Going to go ahead and take care of this one. And then with any sort of extra time left, I'll head over to the route above Undela Bay and show you guys those two rich trainers. So even with no um, 
Tyranitar lead, we still see a Didalith lead, which does the same exact thing. It sets up Sandstream, but we did heal. We got our Torkoal to be able to reset the weather. This is also a huge reason why having a low level slow Torkoal is super, super important because you need to be slower than your opponent to have that priority on the weather. If you're the slower Pokemon, your weather gets prioritized because you kind of set it up after, if that makes sense. I've seen a lot of people get level 100 Torkoals for this strategy, which I understand the like thought process behind it. It's sort of like, why not? Your explosion will do more damage you know you're going to explode anyway who cares uh you can also have as a backup eruption pokemon etc etc but what happens is the high level torkoal is actually objectively worse because what happens is if that high level torkoal gets fade fake outed fake outed uh which happens quite a lot in gym runs you're gonna get fucked you're gonna get put in this really really shitty position where you have this shitty level you know 100 torkoal just sitting on the field at like 98 percent hp and it's, it's, it becomes a liability. It doesn't do nearly enough damage compared to Typhlosion. It's not fast enough. Like it just ends up hurting you and giving you more chances to fail the run as opposed to the consistency of the Typhlosions in the low level Torkoal. All right, there's the Ouroboros City Gym defeated with around three minutes left. So even with horrible RNG, some of the worst RNG possible, we might actually be able to take on both, if not at least one of the rich trainers. So let's go ahead and go over to Unova and I'll show you guys exactly where those two are at. And I recommend not healing. Don't waste your time healing before heading over to the two rich trainers because their fights are really, really, really simple. Just make sure you spam flamethrower. You actually don't want to spam eruption against these guys because you'll run out of pp super quickly and then you'll have to struggle uh or switch out or something like that so it becomes a little more you waste time essentially so just make sure you come over to these two rich trainers these two old people here at route 13 we're essentially beating up old people for a bit of their retirement funds i know pokemon's a tough world but you got to do what you got to do to make that pokey in so you just come over here uh flamethrower them and you should be able to flamethrower through all five of their pokemon they're single battles it's super easy you'll always one shot even things like swana that resist the damage you're just doing way too much damage should be really easy fights. You just want to be able to get through it as fast as possible. Let's see if we can weave them both in. All right, there we go. That first one defeated with one minute and 26 seconds left. I actually think we, it's going to be really close. We might be able to take both of them on. You get 9,500 Poke in for, from each of them for defeating them. So basically 10k a piece, really good Poke in. If you don't have a Riches Charms active, you still get like 5k. So honestly, it's, if you have the time, it's still nice to go ahead and come do these, but you don't really have to. It's just extra time on the charm sort of thing. All right, it looks like we're gonna make it, which is awesome. 25 seconds left. To get the boosted amount of Poke in, you have to defeat their last Pokemon with the charm still active. If you defeat their Pokemon and the charm runs out during the dialogue, you'll actually still get the boosted rate. But if the charm runs out before you defeat that last Pokemon, you won't get the boosted rate, even if you defeated most of the Pokemon on the charm. So there we go. 10K from that guy as well. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. That's the end of my daily gym run. I do this every day and I earn a lot of Poke in through it. And I hope you guys can use this to be helpful to you and make a ton of Poke in. Man, if you want to rise up, if you've started this game for the first time, um, really, gym runs just change the game. The amount of Poke in you make every single day from a gym run is just phenomenal. And I personally, I usually don't spend much more time wasting time making money in Poke Pokemo besides my gym run. I do my gym run when I wake up every day. And then from there on out, I like I do what I like to do in the game, which is essentially shiny hunting most of the time. So being able to wake up, uh, you know, spend one hour to get that sort of obligatory money making out of the way to be able to play the game is super nice. It's super powerful. It lets you focus on the things you want to do in the game and play the game you want to play. Now, I do want to quickly touch on Morimoto. So you can see at the very, very bottom there, I have Morimoto not recommended highlighted. I don't do Morimoto, but there are some people who do, but I'll at least explain to you guys what Morimoto is, where he's at. So you go to Castellia City. I believe he's in this building, if I'm not mistaken. He's essentially a secret sort of uh, trainer that Game Freak actually put into the game, and it's really cute. Uh, he was meant to be, I believe, the creator of Pokemon, or meant to be a, a, a member. It's this guy right here. If you talk to him, you'll battle him, but he's actually really, really tough to beat. He is no joke. Usually, you cannot defeat him with this Jimmy Run team. You usually have to have a specific team sort of designatedly built to defeat him, uh, and he's really risky. He's what I would call really high risk, really high reward, um, where you can make like 30k or something from him if you, if you defeat him while on the charm. You can make you make a lot of Poke in from defeating him while on Rich's charm. 
But the issue comes is if if you fight him and you spend like five minutes fighting him and you lose, you lose those five minutes. So it's very, very scary. It's very risky. I lose to him pretty consistently to give you an idea of like how difficult he is. So honestly, I don't worry about him. I like my gym runs to be as brain dead as possible because it's if it's something I'm doing every single day when I wake up, I want it to be easy. I want it to be consistent. I don't need to go above and beyond. I want to make that pokey in and just sort of get on with my day and get it over with. But that option is there if you want to take that risk. All right, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and physically calculate how much Pokeyen I earned. All right, so I'm now sitting at 11,165,000 Pokeyen, and I started this video at 10,836,000 Pokeyen like this. That'll come out to 300, you know, right where we guesstimated that 330k mark. And then obviously I would go ahead and subtract the richest charms price from this. So I was pretty much spot on with my guesstimations and my calculations. Uh, hopefully that show you guys and proves it to you guys how much money you can make. It's a ton, usually a little bit or close, very close to, if not over 300k Pokemon per hour with this method. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. If this video was either helpful, entertaining, or informed you along your Pokemon progress and along your Pokemon journey, please do try to leave a little like on the video. It helps out a ton. If you hated this video, if you thought it was confusing, rambly, too long, not clear information, you know, dick stuck in toaster, you know, the meme, uh, go ahead and dislike the video. That's also totally okay. Leave me all of your comments and feedback down in the comment section below. Make sure if you want to see daily Pokemon content, daily uploads about this beautiful game, whether it's guides, PVP, money making, uh, commentary about the game and just news and updates and everything, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I think only around 38% of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. And then there's also a discord link down below. If you ever want to see when videos like this are uploaded, Uploaded as soon as possible or whenever I'm streaming live here on YouTube and then finally if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel and please only do this if you have the financial needs to do so uh, if you're deciding between your next meal being Chipotle and supporting me go get that Chipotle but essentially you want to go above and beyond and support if you think I've earned it go ahead and become a YouTube member to me for five bucks a month drop a twitch prime or a twitch sub over on my twitch or most importantly PayPal and Venmo are actually the best ways to support me to allow me to keep making content because they take way less of a cut whereas things like twitch or YouTube take like a 30% cut uh, from any sort of uh, support like that so thank you all so much I really appreciate it I'm super honored to be able to do what I do and I just genuinely hope this guide was helpful I hope you guys make a ton of pokey in and I hope you guys have a fantastic day keep playing Pokemon. Mo keep being cool have a good one guys i'll see you later peace hey if you're watching this that means you watched till the very end of the video and i really appreciate that this screen is used to say thank you to everyone who goes above and beyond and supports me anyone who's a youtube member twitch prime twitch sub patreon member whatever you support i really appreciate it and you allow me to keep making videos thank you so much and have a good one